Hi everyone, welcome to our Museum Beatles channel and thank you for watching again! Today we're really excited to examine this small but mighty predator. This is a stoat. They are known for their agility, striking coats and their important role in ecosystems as carnivorous hunters. We'll share fascinating facts about their fur, muscles and skeleton. We hope you will enjoy it! Let's start with a closer look at the stoat's fur. We know this is a stoat and not another species in the mustelid family, like a weasel or a mink, because of the size of the animal, but also because of the notable black tip on the tail. The exact reason why the stoat has a black tipped tail is not proven, but it is thought that this works as a predator distraction, directing the predator attack toward the tail rather than the vital body parts. These carnivorous animals are fascinatingly good at hunting. They have a relative small body that measures 16 to 31 centimeters, 6.3 to 12.2 inches in length, and they only weigh 90 to 445 grams, 3.2 to 15.7 ounces. But they can take down much bigger animals than themselves, like rabbits and hares. The slender elongated bodies allow stoats to chase certain prey directly into their burrows. Instead of excavating their own burrows, stoats often use the dens of animals that they have hunted and line their nest chambers with the fur and feathers of their prey. You can see that each foot has, relative to the proportion of their digits, really large claws. Their claws are not retractable like the claws of your cat. Most feline species have retractable or rather protrusible claws to keep them sharp for precise hunting, protect them from wear and enable silent movement for ambush predation. Mustelids, like stoats, have exposed claws suited for active hunting, digging and climbing. Their claws are always ready for immediate use, reflecting their versatile and opportunistic hunting style. These differences are because of their ecological niches, with cats focusing on stealth and precision, while stoats need claws that are versatile and tough enough for all kinds of tasks. Like other mustelids, stoats have excellent eyesight, sharp hearing and an incredibly strong sense of smell, all finely tuned for hunting. Their long, sensitive whiskers add another layer to their sensory toolkit, helping them navigate tight burrows and detect subtle movements in their surroundings, even in the dark. Stoats are crepuscular hunters, which means that they are active during dawn and dusk, and their vision is well adapted for low light. These combined senses make them agile and highly effective predators. Stoats have four pairs of nipples, but they are only visible in females. The male stoat has something the female doesn't have, a curved penis bone, called a baculum. So, as we take a closer look, we're about to find out that this one is a male. Let's see if we can find this bone later in the video when we are examining the skeleton. While I start skinning, let me tell you a bit more about the fur. In winter, stoats in colder climates mold into a thicker, pure white coat, known as ermine. But the black tip till remains. In historical times, the winter coats of stoats were extensively used in the fur linings of royal robes, which is why those robes have so many black spots. The color change of the stoat is heavily influenced by day length and the local environmental conditions. In regions with milder winters or unpredictable snowfall, the frequency and extent of this color change can vary significantly. With changing global climates, the reliability of snow cover is decreasing in some regions. This environmental shift can lead to a mismatch between the stoat's white winter coat and the snowless landscape, which in turn could increase predation risks because of the reduced camouflage effectiveness. Now that we have removed the skin, let's take a closer look at the stoat's muscle structure. Stoats rely on their flexibility and agility to hunt prey, and as you can see, they have a lean muscular body and strong hind legs that enables these quick fluent movements. The jaw muscles of the stoat are strong enough to deliver a lethal bite to their prey, typically targeting the back of the neck. This ensures a quick kill, allowing the stoat to subdue animals larger than itself. The elongated neck, with the head of the stoat set exceptionally far in front of the shoulders, also helps the stoat to deliver those swift and precise bites to the neck. 
as the beetles do their part of the work, here's a fun fact about stoats. The weasel subfamily, and also the stoats, are known for their playful and acrobatic behavior which looks a bit like dancing. This behavior, sometimes referred to as the weasel war dance, is thought to confuse prey and give the stoat an advantage during the hunt. If you are the proud owner of a domestic ferret, you will probably recognize this behavior. I read that ferrets are really clumsy as they dance and will often collide with or fall over objects and furniture, but I'd love to hear if this is true from a pet owner. Another interesting fact. In ecosystems, stoats are vital predators, controlling small mammal populations and maintaining balance in the food web. However, their introduction to New Zealand to manage rabbits and hares had catastrophic effects. Native ground nesting birds like the kiwi, which evolved without mammalian predators, were left defenseless. Stoats are now one of New Zealand's most destructive invasive species. A tough reminder of the risks of introducing non-native species into new environments. Now let's look at the stoat skeleton. You can see the size of the claws compared to its digits even better now. Check those really long claws compared to its digits. Also, notice how the ribcage is elongated, maximizing space for vital organs while keeping the body slim and streamlined for burrowing and hunting. Just as with the ribcage, the skull is also elongated and narrow, designed to match the slender body. Though the brain case itself can be described as narrow, the stoat exhibits really advanced predatory behavior, which indicates a well-adapted brain for hunting and survival. We found the penis bone. We know that this is the baculum because of this groove that runs along the length of it. This is the urethral groove and provides a pathway for the urethra to carry urine or semen. The baculum itself supports the penis and aids in successful mating by providing structural rigidity. The stoat's teeth are perfectly crafted for a carnivorous lifestyle. With their sharp canines and slicing carnassials, they can puncture, grip and shear through the flesh of their prey with ease. The carnassial tooth is a specialized tooth found in carnivorous mammals. They work together like scissors, with the upper and lower carnassials shearing past each other to efficiently cut through meat and small bones. The stoat has 34 teeth, which can be described using the dental formula now shown on the screen. So how does this work? The letters represent incisors, canines, premolars and molars. The left side of the forward slash refers to one side of the upper jaw, while the right side of the forward slash refers to the lower jaw. This shows that both the upper and lower jaw have three incisors, one canine and three premolars. Additionally, the upper jaw has one molar, while the lower jaw has two. In the upper jaw, the last premolar is the upper carnassial tooth, while in the lower jaw, the first molar is the lower carnassial tooth. That's it for today! Thank you so much for watching! We hope you learned something new about the stoat and its incredible adaptations. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and if you have any questions about stoats or our beetles, leave a comment below. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more educational content like this. We aim to post new videos every other week. See you next time!